Hi, so today I wanted to show you how you can make a functional security camera within Godot and have it display on a screen like this or anywhere else in a 3D environment. So let's take a look on how to make this. So to start out with, all I have here is a simple 3D scene. There's my player character here who has his own camera, of course, on the face. There is a table here with some stuff on it. The monitor currently isn't doing anything. It's just an empty 3D asset. It's not really doing much. Then we have the camera up here. Again, it's not doing anything. There's no actual functionality to this yet. We're gonna be adding these parts now. So, first of all, this camera here should have a child. Let's add a camera node to it. So we can actually record something. Now let's move it somewhere close to where the actual front of it is. Should roughly fit, shouldn't it? Uh, let's preview this. This looks kind of fine, yeah. Mostly. Uh, it needs to be rotated down a bit. Let's go into the transform and see rotation. Uh, which axis is this? X axis 30? Minus 30? Mm, minus 25. Minus 20. There you go, that looks roughly right. Yeah, that looks about correct. Sure. You can fine tune this as you like, of course, but we need to roughly figure out what direction is this camera going to be looking. We can preview it here. This is what the view from the camera currently looks like. So, to be able to hook this camera up to something, because currently, if we were to start the game, it wouldn't really do anything either. It would try to render this camera instead of the player camera, or we just wouldn't see it at all. The reason for that is, there is one viewport at the root of any game, essentially. And this main viewport is where the camera is rendering to. So whatever is the first active camera in this scene tree is going to be rendering to that viewport and all the others just do nothing. So let's give this camera its own viewport. You can just add this viewport node here, move it up there, make the camera its child. Now we're going to want to choose a resolution here. I'm going to go with 600 by 400, but you can put anything you want in here. This is the resolution your viewport is going to be rendering at. What's it complaining about? It says the size is zero. That's not true. I don't care. I'm just going to ignore this. Now one more detail. Since we are working in a 3D environment with GLES 3 active here right now, we want to make sure that our viewport is rendered using linear coloring. Basically here on the rendering tab, we want to go on keep 3D linear. If we don't do that, the colors are going to be all grayed out on the screen later. Doesn't look very nice. So let's activate this and it should be fine. I do believe on GLES 2 you don't have to do that, but I'm using the newer version, so that's what I'm going with. Now, how do we show this viewport on the screen? Simple enough. Let's close this stuff. I don't want to look at all that. There, we got the monitor separately. Let's go near it. And let's give it a child node, sprite 3D. And this sprite is getting the texture, new viewport texture, from this viewport. You can just select it in the scene tree. And it should exist. There we go, there it is. Um, it's quite large right now. And upside down. Uh, up, upside down. There we go. So, let's move this around a bit. Transform. Rotation. Around Y90. I guess. Seems fine-ish. Let's make it quite a lot smaller. 0.1. And 0.1. That already looks pretty close to what we're going for. It's not entirely aligned, but we can just move it around a bit, scale it a bit. 
it needs to be 0 0.08 let's see 0 0.08 I'm making it a bit smaller than the actual screen uh yeah that makes it a bit easier to adjust it here let's just um stretch it to here stretch it to there roughly and this is already fine now you can already see the screen on there if I load the game up now let's see yeah we can see ourselves on the screen or as it should be it's a pretty simple trick but I think it makes for a very nice effect now there's still a little bit of a gap down at the bottom here I'm seeing so you can adjust this a little bit just move it around a little scale it up a bit more make sure it fits nicely into the constraints of the screen it shouldn't peek out at the sides because the sprite isn't actually anchored to anything it could go outside quite easily it should optimally end just slightly inside of this edge of the screen or if you can be bothered to uh, deal with the exact scale and you know exactly how large the inner part of the screen is you can also calculate it I'm not gonna do that because while modeling I wasn't actually paying attention to exactly how large I made the screen itself so yeah, that's the thing anyway this will be all for today bye